Hello and welcome to our lecture on psychological theories of crime. I'm Danielle McCartney and today we'll explore how psychological theories explain criminal behavior, how they propose to prevent criminal behavior, and the practical challenges these theories face in application and testing. Let's begin with psychoanalytic theories. Psychoanalytic theorists present an interesting perspective on criminal behavior, viewing it as a manifestation of a mental disturbance. Sigmund Freud's model divides the psyche into the id, ego, and superego. According to Freud, each plays a crucial role in personality development and can contribute to criminal tendencies. The id contains basic instincts and drives, such as the need for food, water, sex, and pleasure. The ego, considered the executive or rational part of the personality, acts to keep the id in check. The superego, on the other hand, embodies the conscience of the individual. According to Freudian theory, an improper fixation during an emotional developmental stage can result in criminal activity. An improper fixation during development creates a conflict between the id, ego, and superego. This conflict may manifest in various forms, such as the Oedipus complex, where a boy develops a desire for his mother and animosity towards his father, or the Electra complex, involving a girl's desire for her father and rivalry with her mother. Okay, moving to personality theories. We find a slightly different explanation for criminal behavior. Here, the focus is on the individual's personality structure. Personality theories propose that criminal activity stems from a defective, deviant, or inadequate personality. That is, criminals are thought to possess defective or improperly developed personality traits. Traits such as hostility, impulsiveness, aggression, and sensation-seeking are seen as indicative of a personality conducive to criminal behavior. Unlike others who develop a socially conforming personality, criminals might develop one based on conflict, impulsiveness, and aggression. Key to this theory is the lack of empathy, remorse, or guilt, and an underdeveloped sense of right and wrong in the criminal mind. Psychopathy is an important construct in the personality theories of crime. Psychopathy is a severe form of antisocial personality disorder. It's characterized by a lack of empathy, shallow emotions, and deceitful behavior. The psychopathy checklist devised by Dr. Robert Haar is a diagnostic tool used in clinical assessments and research to measure psychopathic traits. It consists of a 20-item inventory that evaluates interpersonal, affective, and lifestyle characteristics, as well as antisocial behaviors, to determine the presence and severity of psychopathic tendencies in individuals. It's widely used in forensic settings to assess the risk of recidivism and in legal contexts for sentencing considerations. Understanding and measuring psychopathy is critical for both theoretical explanations of criminal behavior and practical applications in criminal justice. Psychology offers diverse perspectives on the correlation between mental health and criminal behavior. Elements from both personality psychology and clinical psychology gives us a more integrative approach to criminal behavior that considers individual pathology and emotional regulation within the context of criminal actions. Psychological approaches to criminal behavior examine how certain mental disorders, like antisocial personality disorder or schizophrenia, may impact an individual's propensity for criminal acts. Antisocial personality disorder is characterized by a pervasive pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others. This may manifest in behaviors that are deceitful, aggressive, or disregard the well-being of others, which can overlap with criminal activities. Schizophrenia, on the other hand, might influence criminal behavior through symptoms like delusions or hallucinations, which could lead to misunderstandings or fear-driven actions that result in criminal incidents. Emotional dysregulation can also play a significant role. Emotional dysregulation refers to a person's inability to control or regulate their emotional responses to stimuli or events. 
This lack of emotional control is often a symptom of psychological conditions such as borderline personality disorder. Individuals with BPD may experience intense bursts of anger, depression, or anxiety, which can lead to impulsive actions and poor decision-making. These impulsive behaviors can sometimes result in criminal acts if the individual engages in risk-taking or aggressive behaviors without considering the consequences. These psychological factors, combined with environmental influences, can lead to behaviors that violate societal norms and laws. Freudian personality and psychological approaches to criminal behavior share a common thread, the insignificance of the criminal act itself. They view the criminal act as a symptom of a deeper psychological or personality disorder. Consequently, the recommended intervention is not punitive, but therapeutic. Under psychoanalytic personality and psychological theories, psychological counseling plays a pivotal role. These perspectives assume that treating an individual as someone who is sick and in need of treatment is essential. Punishing the criminal act without addressing the root mental cause is considered of little or no value. Thus, counseling is viewed as the only adequate method to deal with the root mental cause. The focus is on treating the underlying disorder with the expectation that once resolved, criminal and deviant behaviors will cease. From the Freudian perspective, counseling can address the internal conflicts and fixations that may lead to criminal behavior. For personality theories, counseling aims to correct or mitigate the maladaptive personality traits that predispose individuals to crime. In general psychological theories, counseling can treat a range of psychological issues, such as emotional dysregulation, that may underlie criminal behavior. Across these theories, the goal of counseling is to resolve the psychological roots of criminal actions to promote rehabilitation, and to reduce recidivism. However, despite their theoretical appeal, testing the effectiveness of these theories in reducing crime is challenging due to their abstract nature. The abstract nature of Freud's id, ego, and superego, and the subjective measures of personality traits, like those identified in the psychopathy checklist, makes them nearly impossible to observe, identify, or measure. This lack of tangibility makes testing psychological theories extremely difficult. And also, these theories can be tautological, meaning that they may be self-fulfilling and not falsifiable through empirical testing. The circular nature of some personality theory predictions, where the trait being tested is both the cause and the effect of the behavior, undermines their testability posing significant obstacles to their empirical scrutiny and application. When we look at the real-world applications of psychological theories to reduce crime and delinquency through therapy and counseling, the results are less than promising. Despite the importance of psychology in criminal justice and in criminology, there's a noticeable gap in the demonstrable effectiveness of this approach. The key concepts of psychological and personality theories, along with their suggested treatments, have yet to show significant measurable impact on reducing criminal activity. When these psychological theories are applied in real-world settings, such as correctional facilities, the anticipated reduction in crime and delinquency has been challenging to quantify. The core issue lies in translating nuanced psychological concepts into effective treatment programs. Factors such as the quality of implementation, the variation in therapeutic models, the diverse needs of individuals, all of these can dilute the effectiveness of psychological programs. Additionally, systemic issues like inadequate funding, lack of trained professionals, and the complexities of measuring behavioral change over time contribute to the difficulty in demonstrating clear outcomes for psychological theories of crime and justice. Consequently, while psychology plays an important role in understanding criminal behavior, its direct impact on crime reduction through therapy and counseling remains an area demanding further evidence and refinement. But remember, this is an evolving field, and what we understand today may be refined tomorrow. So that's it for today. 
I hope you learned a lot. Stay curious, keep learning, and I'll see you next time.